Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our nature unit, and we're going to be talking about something that comes from the ground, and it's kind of precious. It's not really a precious stone like rubies or diamonds,、uh-huh. but it's something else. It's organic, I guess, but it's very valuable. And、uh, you've probably、uh, seen this before in movies, and you probably even know someone with this name. We're talking about amber in today's program. And we're describing it as gold from trees. Cool.、Uh, you don't get them from trees right now. Of course, it comes from trees and then it sits under the ground for millions of years、mm-hmm. and turns into this substance, which is valuable in many ways. And so we're going to talk about it in today's program. So let's get to it. Let's listen to the entire lesson read one time. Most of us have met at least one person named Amber in our lives, which might lead us to wonder why this name is so popular. Amber falls into the same category as names like ruby, pearl, and opal. They are all beautiful, precious gems. However, while rubies and opals are stones, amber is more like a pearl than you might expect. They're both biological products. The hard golden material. Which humans have used for ten thousand years or more comes from trees. When they're injured, they secrete a sticky fluid called resin to protect themselves. Over time and under specific conditions, certain kinds of this resin harden into amber. At the beginning of this process, the still soft resin might attract insects with its fragrance. Once the material hardens into amber over millions of years. These insects and other substances caught in it provide visual interest. Moreover, they're an outstanding resource for a scientific study, as they provide a snapshot of the state of the world 30 to 90 million years ago. Because of its great age, amber is usually found deep underground. Due to its composition, amber floats, and amber mining exploits this buoyancy. Miners pump water into soil disturbed by mining, and then pull amber from the debris that floats to the top of the muddy soup. Like all kinds of mining, it's terribly destructive. In addition to this ecological damage, amber mining in Russia and Ukraine is harmful on another level. Many of the mines are run by organized crime groups. These mines' illegal status doesn't make them less profitable. So gangs continue to defy the law to operate these mines and even open new ones. Okay, let's dig in, guys. It's our nature unit, and we're talking about a gem that's called amber, a gemstone. So this is、uh, familiar to me because when I was growing up, my cousin. There were only、uh, I only had one cousin that was my age, or at least in my age range. All the rest were boys, so the two of us would hang out. And I remember she had an amber ring、mm. that I thought was really kind of unique.、Um, it was kind of a, a yellow brown color.、Um, back then, it wasn't very expensive. I'm sure it's more expensive to buy amber gems、uh, for any kind of jewelry these days. Everything's more expensive, but、uh, I thought it was quite pretty. I did not know it was organic and had such a fascinating history. Uh, where it comes from, how it's mined,、uh, it's very unique in terms of gemstones.、Uh, indeed, and of course, you probably have seen this before, or at least in fiction, with the movie Jurassic Park.、Uh, the old guy、uh, has a rock of amber, and inside is an insect, and they extract DNA from that insect, and they、Ooh. recreate dinosaurs. <laughs>、uh, that's where they got the DNA. But in any,、uh, Of course, fiction, of course.、Mm-hmm. But in any case, here, yes, this is the story of Amber, and most of us have met at least one person named Amber in our lives, which、uh, might lead us to wonder why this name is so popular. It's probably going to be a while before people name their children Amber because of what happened between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. <laughs> so I suppose、uh, lots of people are going to think,、uh, "Well, it's a nice name, but、uh, thank you, no thanks. I'm not、mm-hmm. going to name my kid after that." To, uh, that particular woman. Well, Amber Heard was crazy. She still is. I'd forgotten that's her first name, Amber Wright. Uh huh. Indeed. Kind of fits her. 
<laughs> uh, does exactly. It depends on which side of the fence you're on there, I guess. Whether you support her or you're against her. But in any case, we're talking specifically about this substance. And amber falls into the same category as names like ruby, pearl,、mm. and opal. They are all beautiful, precious gems. So yes, indeed, we do use the names of precious stones as names a lot of time. I've never heard of anybody called Diamond. Maybe you'll have、uh, a nickname. Name. Unless it's a last name like Neil Diamond,、uh, indeed, the singer,、uh, something like that, or or the nickname of a gangster or something like that. <laughs> These particular things are beautiful and they are precious and they are gems. A gem, of course, is a precious stone like a diamond, a sapphire, opals, etc. Those are precious gems. They cost a lot of money, and of course, women like to wear them in their jewelry. That's right. So when you talk about categories, we're saying that these names all fall into the same category together. They have things that are similar、uh, amongst them. So if you're talking about a category, you're talking about a way to divide things up or to group things. It's kind of a class of people or things that have shared characteristics. They have things in common. So yeah, those are、uh, definitely names that you don't hear so much anymore, except Amber. Amber has continued to be popular, Tom.、Mm -hmm. Even though Ruby, Pearl, and Opal, for the most part, I would say those are names from the 1800s to early 1900s. Like you were saying, Grandma, Great Grandma.、Mm. Uh, I think we had an Opal in my family. Yeah, but、uh, the Amber gemstone is quite precious and beautiful. The one that my cousin had, because amber comes in different colors, she had the one that's、uh, pretty commonplace, the one you see the most of, which is the yellow-brown、uh, mixture together. And sometimes it actually looked a little orange to me. Right. So remember these gems. Uh, ruby, pearl, and opal、uh -huh. are actually gem stones, but amber is more like a pearl than you might expect.、Mm. They're both biological products. Of course, these gems we just mentioned are minerals in the ground. They're made、mm. out of rock, basically. Whereas pearls and amber, well, they're made out of biological products. They're actually organic.、Uh, they're made from living substances.、Mm. Pearls, of course, grow inside oysters. And、uh, they're of course、uh, made by living things. Now, the hard golden material which humans have used for ten thousand years or more comes from trees. So yes, you might be wondering where amber comes from.、Uh, it's not a mineral, as we said. It actually comes from trees. But again, you can't just walk up to a tree and find amber.、Uh, it has to be from an ancient tree that died millions of years ago and is buried in the ground and has gone through a chemical process again over millions of years. Right. So. What you're getting if you find some amber or given some amber is something that has been around and been、uh, going through the process of forming for millions of years. So it's quite precious. So it's hard, golden. We're ex we're、uh, kind of defining it as that. And humans have used、uh, have used this particular gem for over ten thousand years or more. So. We've had it around in our daily lives for quite a while, you could say. But like Tom said, it comes from trees, which was shocking to me. When they're injured, when trees are injured, that is, they secrete a sticky fluid called resin to protect themselves. If you're injured, there's there's been some accident or you've hurt yourself, not on purpose, but you've been.、Um, Harmed, damaged, wounded. There are lots of ways to injure things, and living plants can be injured, and animals, of course, can be injured. If you secrete something, it just means something's coming out of something else. Usually, it's something.、Uh, maybe you've hurt yourself, and you have a blister. And you pop the blister; it gets filled with kind of a liquid inside. That if you pop it,、uh, that liquid will come out. So it's secreting something. We call it pus, I think.、Ugh. But、uh, yeah, that's gross. So it's a sticky fluid. Fluid just means it's liquid. And resin is a word that takes me back to my youth because I used to play the violin. And to play any stringed instrument, you would use this little bit of resin and. Put your bow across it so it would it would hang on the strings as you as you pulled、uh, your bow across the string better, and it gave me the creeps because it was like 
you know, your nails on a chalkboard. Ooh. It's just yucky. I hated the the sound and the feel of using resin. Well, I never took violin lessons, so I don't understand that at all. But in any case, resin, of course, is produced uh, similarly from、uh, plants and trees and things、uh -huh. like that. It's kind of sticky, and that's of course、uh, related to amber. Again, trees get injured for some reason. Maybe a car bashes into them or something、Ooh. like that. So in order to protect itself, it secretes、mm -hmm. this sticky. Fluid called resin. Fluid is like a liquid, but it's kind of thicker, like、uh, your transmission fluid in your car or your steering fluid in your car. And sometimes doctors will tell you when you have have a cold or the flu, oh, drink plenty of liquid, plenty of fluid,、hmm. lots lots of fluids, like、um, orange juice and yeah, stuff so like that. Yeah, so keep yourself hydrated. Yeah, exactly. Now, over time, of course, and under specific conditions, certain kinds of this resin harden、mm -hmm. into and. Amber, and that's how amber is formed.、Uh, to harden means to get hard. Like when water freezes, it hardens into ice. In this particular case,、uh, the resin was kind of soft before, but over time it starts to get harder and harder. It hardens into amber, and that's where amber comes from. And that's where we're going to take a break right now. So let's turn things over now to our Chinese teacher. 听众朋友，大家好，我是 Anna。我们今天要带大家来看看 amber。好，所以 amber 其实啊，它到底有什么意义？它其实跟 ruby、pearl、opal 都是属于同一类的名字。其实它们都是所谓很珍贵的宝石的意思。当然啦，这个红宝石啊、蛋白石都是属于石头，但是其实琥珀比较像是珍珠类的东西耶。而且，甚至比你想象的更像珍珠。它们其实都是属于生物的制品，而不是属于矿石的那一种宝石。好，我们来看第一段第三句的地方，特别注意一下。However， 逗点之后的 while， 在这里根据文艺的推断，它是 although 虽然的意思。虽然 rubies 跟 opals 都是所谓的石头之类的，但是 amber。其实比较像是生物性的东西，它比较像是珍珠类的东西。好，那这个琥珀到底是怎么来的呢？我们就很纳闷啦。这个我们已经使用超过一万年以上的这种硬的金色的原料，这种所谓的 amber 是来自于树木。哎，在第二段的第一句，特别注意一下，一开始我们看到的 the hard golden material， 它其实也是某个关系子句的先行词。什么关系子句先行词呢？逗点之后的 which 一直到逗点 more 这个地方，我们可以左右挂号起来。假设你把 which 到 more 这边都遮掉，你会发现句子很简单。它其实讲的就是这个硬硬金黄色的物质，其实就来自于树木。可是这个 material 我们都知道，我们要谈的是 amber， 所以就打个逗点，再补充说明一下，不用限定是哪一种 material。这个东西呀、啊、，which。我们已经使用了超过一万年。当然，在关系子句当中，我们看到超过一万年的时候，这个动词就会用现在完成式 have used。那到底这个树木跟琥珀之间有什么关系呢？其实啊，树木受损的时候，它们就会分泌一种称为树脂的黏黏的黏性液体，去保护树木自己。所以在第二句话当中，我们就看到关键了。这个关键的东西呢，就是所谓的树脂这种黏液怎么说？它叫做 resin， R E S I N。至少我们要知道这个关键的关键物质。那不过呢，树木如果产生出 resin 树脂这种东西，随着一段时间之后，当然要有一些特定的条件啦。这类型的树脂就会硬化成为所谓的琥珀。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. It's our nature unit, and we're talking about amber, a precious gem, and how it's formed, where it comes from. It's kind of a cool gem. It's not like the rest of them. It's a biological product. It's organic. Which a lot of our gems aren't, but、uh, yeah, it actually comes from trees. We found out before the break that when trees are injured, or harmed, or damaged, or hurt, they'll often secrete 
or they have this little sticky fluid that flows from them, and that fluid's called resin. And that's to help to pr- help to protect themselves, to protect the tree, which is so cool. Love nature. Over time, takes a while. In fact, it takes a lot of time. Under specific conditions, you know the the conditions have to be right. Certain kinds of this resin will harden into amber.、Uh, hard can be turned into a verb by adding en. If you have soft. You can add an en, and you can soften things. You can take length and lengthen things. You can have something that's short and shorten something else. A lot of times, we'll take a word that maybe is functioning as an adjective or even a noun, and we can add en and turn it into a verb. And that's what we're doing here. Hard is actually an adjective, so it does take a long time for that resin. That started out as a sticky fluid to harden up, and you need the right conditions for that to happen. Harden reminds me of that basketball player, the guy with a beard who used to play for the Houston Rockets. I think he got traded, but that's another subject. James、mm. Harden—that's his、uh, name. But、uh, we're talking about Harden as a verb here. Yes, this resin will harden into amber, and at the beginning of this process, the still soft resin might attract insects with its fragrance. So it lets off a certain smell, and insects are attracted to it.、Uh, we've all used this probably before. Uh, sometimes you leave a, a bowl out or a, a can or something, and、yeah. you forget to wash it. And when you come back the next day, oh, there's a roach in there,、oh! or there are ants in there. They are attracted to the fragrance or the smell, and they're pretty stupid. They climb on in there, and then they can't get out. They get stuck in the gooey substance there, and that's what、Gross. happens to insects here. The insects、uh, are attracted to that amber when it's still sticky, and they get stuck. And once the material hardens into amber over millions of years, these insects and other substances caught in it provide visual interest. So, indeed, this does happen sometimes. You find amber, and you look and you look at it, and you、mm-hmm. go, "Wow, I see little specks of dust in there, or even the body of an insect. How the heck did that get in there?" Yeah, yeah, that's really fun. So this is part of the magic of how amber is formed. So you could see some little、uh, bugs, insects that have been, you know,、uh, encased in what that is is the hardened resin, and they can't get away. So they have to live the rest of their their lives. I guess they're already dead、um, in that piece of resin that keeps hardening over time. So once it hardens, these insects they're caught. And well, other things are caught in it too, and they、um, provide visual interest. I've always thought that amber was interesting because it's not just this clear color; it's got other like flavors in it, and it does look like it has other colors running through it. I never thought, though, that it was insects that、mm. had been、uh, stuck in there and hardened over millions of years. I'm going to look more closely next time. Visual is one of our vocabulary words. It just means something that you can see with your eyes. So、um, it does provide a lot of visual interest and makes that gem even more beautiful. And the noun is vision. Of course, sometimes you go to see an eye doctor to have your vision checked, or to have your eyes checked. And of course, we've got some substances that provide visual interest.、Uh, yes, there might be some、uh, dust particles、mm-hmm. that got stuck in there, and they could tell us what the composition of the atmosphere was millions of years ago. Or better yet, it can tell us about insect life、uh, a long time ago. Moreover, or in addition, they're an outstanding resource for. For a scientific study, as they provide a snapshot of the state of the world 30 to 90 million years ago, which is basically what I just said. A snapshot is kind of like a quick look at something. Usually, it refers to a photograph that、mm. someone took,、yeah. uh, a casual photograph of your friends at a party or something like that. Oftentimes, this is shortened to snap.、Uh, I took some snaps at the Halloween party, for example. Some snaps, yeah. Some snapshots, some snaps. Yeah, some pics, some photos. So they provide a quick look,、um, kind of a look back, I could say here, at the state of the world thirty to ninety million years ago. So it's probably something that scientists like to get their hands on, because of its great age. It's very old. Amber is usually found deep underground. Oh, so it takes some work to get it out. 
due to its composition, what is in it, what it, what it's made of. That's its composition. Amber floats. See, to me, the amber looks like it's very heavy. I'm surprised.、Mm. I've never tried to have、uh, put it in water to see if it floats. Amber mining exploits this buoyancy or takes advantage of the fact that it floats. Buoyancy just means something that's very light,、um, something could, that can float, basically. And you could also describe somebody who's in a really good mood and very happy as being very buoyant. Buoyant. Buoyancy is the noun form. Right. Wood is buoyant. It will float. Yeah. And of course, amber floats. It's buoyant. And miners pump water into soil disturbed by mining, and then pull amber from the debris that floats to the top of the muddy soup. So maybe miners were looking for coal or other kinds of minerals, and they also thought, hmm, there might be some amber in here too. So all we got to do is pump water into the dirt or into To the soil that was disturbed by mining, and then the amber should float up to the top among the debris. A、uh, debris is just kind of stuff left over from some kind of process, an explosion, or something like that.、Uh, if,、uh, for say, for example, a boat sinks, or、mm-hmm. I should say, maybe a plane、uh, crashes in the ocean,、uh, they'll go out and look for debris, things floating in the ocean、uh, from the crash there. And yes, they're looking for things that are floating. At the top of this muddy soup, again, it's going to be mud mixed with water, so it's going to be like this gray soup-like substance.、Ew. And this is、uh, like all kinds of mining, and like all kinds of mining, it's terribly destructive. Yeah. So I guess when they do that to the ground, it can cause damage to the environment. Yes. So in addition to this ecological damage, so we've told you about the damage. Now we're going to talk about something else. On top of that, amber mining in Russia and Ukraine is harmful on another level. Many of the mines are run by organized crime groups, which, of course, here we call hei shi hui. So, yeah, they're not the good guys. Ecological is also a vocabulary word. It just means having to do with the. Ecology of the world, you know, it's the branch of biology that actually deals with、uh, the organisms that we have on this earth. We're part of that that cycle of life, and how they interact and interrelate.、Uh, so, yeah, it does cause some ecological damage, and it's also owned and mined by by bad guys, the、mm. black hats we call them. Yep, organized crime groups, the mafia, etc.,、yeah. and that sort of happens, I think, in Africa with diamond mines. You've、yeah. probably heard of that before. And these mines' illegal status doesn't make them less profitable, so gangs continue to defy the law to operate these mines and even open new ones. So here we've got status. Some people say status. Both are correct. I go with status. I do, I do means, too. Yeah.、Uh, that just means the、uh, condition of something, the current state、mm-hmm. of affairs regarding something. Uh, what kind of status do you have? Are, what's your marital status, for example? Oh, I'm single. I'm married. I'm divorced, etc. That is an example of your marital status. Yeah. So, it's a, it's got an interesting way of being mined. It hurts the earth, and it's also, you know, kind of.、Uh, Run by bad guys who want to be careful. So the mines' illegal status; these mines we're talking about doesn't make them less profitable. So gangs continue to defy the law. If you defy the law, you kind of thumb your nose at the law. Say, I don't care. I don't care if there's a, a law against it. I'm doing it anyway. If you defy your teacher, it's kind of like your teacher says, "Will you please sit down?" And maybe a student is being really bad and says, "No, that's defying someone."、Uh, you don't want to defy the law and get in trouble.、Um, but they continue to defy the law because they're not afraid, and they operate these mines and even open new ones. Right, so maybe some of those ambers, or the, that amber you're wearing on your hand right now, uh-huh. ladies, uh, has blood on it in a certain way. But、uh, we'll talk about that some more in our next program. Right now, we're going to turn things over again to our Chinese teacher. 在这个过程刚开始的时候，本来软软的树脂，因为它毕竟是树分泌的东西嘛，就会有一种香气。这个香气就会吸引昆虫。在第二段第四句的地方，我们最后面看到的关键字。Fragrance 很重要。这个香气因为会吸引昆虫的关系，所以我们看到整个句子的使用在动词部分是 
attract something with something. 我们看到的是 attract insects， 吸引昆虫 with its fragrance， 用它的香气。那如果这个香气已经吸引到了昆虫，昆虫过去。不管是爬过去还是飞过去，它就会被粘在这个所谓的树脂上。所以一旦呢、啊，这种被粘住的原料粘了昆虫啊或其他的物质，这个原料经过数百万年就硬化成琥珀之后，被困在里面的东西，我们看起来就很好玩呢。哎，硬硬的东西好像是石头一般，可是里面可能有蚂蚁呀、啊、或者是小虫子，就会造成了一种所谓视觉上的兴趣。在第二段的第五句当中。第一个字的 once 不是一次哦，在这里当连接词，强调时间。一旦当什么什么时候发什么什么事情发生的时候，也就是 when 的意思，但是强调那一瞬间。所以呢，一旦原料经过数百万年硬化成为琥珀之后，那个所谓的视觉上的所谓的兴趣，其实在逗点之后的这个子句也有一个简化的关系子句，先行词就是逗点之后的。These insects and other substances. 简化的关系子句只有三个字，就是后面的 caught in it。省略的是冠带 that 跟 be 动词 are。当然，除此之外，如果我们可以看到，甚至上万年前、几千万年前，这种被困在里面的东西，就可以提供一些科学的研究啊。所以，这个琥珀其实是科学研究很重要的资源。因为他们提供三千至九千万年前当时世界状况，被困在里面的是什么样的东西，然后拿来分析之后，发现当时的世界状况是什么样子。在同样的第二段第六句的地方，逗点之后的 s， 在这里根据文意，它应该是表示原因，所以它是 because 或者是 since 的意思。当然，因为年代久远啦，琥珀通常都会在地底的深处被发现。那我们要怎么去开采它呢？主要的原因就是因为琥珀它的密度是 1.08 那么它呢是宝石章当中啊密度最低的，而且它会浮于水哦，所以矿工就会把水灌在受到开采破坏的土壤当中，然后把琥珀从漂浮到泥浆顶部的残余物当中提取出来。我们特别注意一下第三段第二句的地方，第三段第二句最后一个字的。Buoyancy 就是所谓的浮力，因为它会漂浮。接着第三句也很重要，它也有一个简化的关系子句。先行词是所有土壤，后面的 disturbed by mining 这三个字可以左右挂号，省略的是 which 或 that 跟 be 动词的 is。好，那这样子的话呢，其实采开采琥珀就会对环境有很大的破坏性，因为要先烧树。然后呢，地下水河啊就会被污染，那植被也会被破坏，甚至像俄罗斯跟乌克兰的这个琥珀开采，其实也是有害的。而且他们有很多是非法的 crime groups 犯罪组织呢在经营，所以对环境是非常有很大的伤害性。我们明天还会看看琥珀的用途。我是安娜，我们明天见。That's it for today, guys. We've got another day to talk about gold from trees. The story of amber. We hope you'll join us then for English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.